Yeah, just keep ignoring the issue and putting up this act. God, so this is from I'm so concerned and worried about I everyone else's problems, except mine, because exist. I'm dealing with a deeper dip. One thing that I want to say is legit. I was very curious to see how he was going to come back to this. Was he going to be hyper aggressive or beat around the bush? And so far, it seems like he's been aggressive, which I like. Although I'm not really concerned about his little text messages that he was getting in trouble for. I'm concerned about him talking about gripping himself to uh, those trannies. I was like, excuse me, what? Don't, don't just slide past that like that's normal. Go back. Wait, what was he doing now? That's what I'm more concerned with. Impression, and I like to project. <laughs> oh, champs, champs, champs. So glad you're back. Hey, I appreciate it, Son Shane. It's good to be back to a certain degree. Right, we got to figure out this Don's monetization thing. So Space September two, not 25th bad. Eight out of 10. is basically when we can reapply glad you enjoyed it, for though. partnership on YouTube. You know, for almost four years, champs, the public demanded to hear from the doc regarding the Twitch suspension. I guess since you all missed the point with my personal statement, maybe it's time to tell my side of the story. Huh, champs? You see, there was a lawsuit pending. I know, with pending, that statement. Let's see. And as part of that arbitration, all parties were not allowed to speak publicly about the case. <laughs> all right. I respected those rules. My lawsuit against Twitch was eventually resolved, as you all know. But even then, as part of the settlement, all parties were still prohibited from speaking publicly about the case or the settlement. Right. You got an NDA. However, if one side violated that confidentiality, then the other side could respond. And again, champs, again, I respected all the confidential obligations. <laughs> mm -mm. But apparently Twitch's own disgruntled employees didn't feel the need to abide by those same obligations. Cody Connors ex-Twitch employee, wasn't even involved, leaks Twitch's reported reason. Years later, Cody, why, why you? From my understanding, they signed an NDA agreement, obviously. And then this Cody dude quit Twitch and then started leaking stuff. As far as I understand, could be wrong on that. Now, that if he still quit Twitch and left that company, that does not excuse him. That does not remove you from an NDA. As far as I know. So regardless if you got fired or removed, the NDA is still in place. For however long that you agreed that it was in place for. Why do this? What was the point? This was settled professionally. And you knowing how black and white the internet is, you decided you fucking rat. Oh, to shit. To the reported reason Twitch banned me in 2020. Well, I mean, for what, Cody? Why? Did What's you not up, know the repercussions from spewing lies about the two-time? Did you not know the repercussions of accusing me, Cody Connors? You see, you don't know shit, and it was obvious from your tweet. You didn't have any firsthand knowledge of my dispute with Twitch. You said that I got banned from Twitch because I was sexting a minor through whispers messages. Oof. <laughs> do you even know what the legal definition of sexting is? I do. And yeah, I used Twitch's whispers, but trust me, I wasn't sexting anyone. You also said the word minor, Cody. I actually don't know the legal. I didn't know that there was an actual legal definition of that. I thought it was more like a slang term. For sexting. <laughs> but I guess in this day and age, you got to have a, a legal definition of it so that way you know if someone's transgressing or not. Anyways, let's continue. I even made sure that word was emphasized in my statement, edited, etc., just to make sure these so called journalists would pick up on it. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, did they ever, champs. When you and all these so called journalists, Cody, fired off your tweets did any of you consider that the twitch user may have been over the legal age of consent at the time of the messages 
Over the legal age of consent. Okay. So this is not confirming nor necessarily denying that the person was 18 years old. So as far as I understand, he's saying that the person was of legal age of consent. The age of consent in some states is like 16, 17, stuff like that. So far, the way that he's making this sound, because if the person was at least 18, I think he would at least mention that. Like the person is an adult legally, like they are, they are 18 years old. So legally, they're an adult. I think he would be much better to say that. But instead, he said that they were of legal age of consent, which could mean they were still 16, 17. You didn't. Neither did any of these journalists and neither did Twitch at the time of the ban. You also tried to tell the world that I was trying to meet up with this user at TwitchCon, but you're wrong. Let's set the record straight. I never intended to meet this user ever. We never made plans to meet at TwitchCon or anywhere else. And in fact, we n never met in person ever. Okay. Your bullshit accusations gave false courage to other former Twitch employees to make shit up as well. I suspect all of you sort of planned and coordinated this attack. These big time publications these, these journalists, these various outlets are sort of just gossip, gossip channels now. Don't you think, champs? They act like they're just gossip channels now without any real journalism and real research happening. They report on, on all this. Yeah, well, I, I have to agree on that. For the most part, that's what a lot of people do nowadays. They don't really uh, research things. It's just, ah, this is my personal opinion. It's not even journalism anymore. It's more like just let me share my uh, personal opinion and that's about it. It's based on leaks from two former Twitch employees, one of whom was supposedly on the trust and safety team. If these anonymous sources worked on the trust and safety team at the time of my Twitch suspension in 2020, then you would hope they would tell the truth. But apparently that's just too much to ask. If these former trust and safety team members, and by the way, I know exactly who they are. <laughs> you gonna name them? Actually had firsthand knowledge. You're already calling out that code. Then what dude. they conveniently left out is one, Twitch's trust and safety team, the same employees that decided to ban me, internally admitted that the whisper messages were not sexting. And All two, right. Twitch's trust and safety team, the same employees that decided to ban me internally acknowledge that the whispers did not constitute child sexual abuse material CSAM. Oof. I'll say it again. Neither I nor the Twitch user exchanged any sexual graphic messages or images. Cody Connors and these other anonymous sources are trying to paint a picture that I was exchanging sexually explicit messages and photos with this Twitch user. That never happened. We need, okay, if he's telling the truth 100% across the board, then there should be a huge likelihood that we're going to see him opening up some lawsuits against people. He's got to sue them. That's like if they're spreading that much information that's all fake and then, you know, trying to uh, defame his name, so to speak, that he should sue them for defamation. I even used the word inappropriate purposely. And look at how it was defined by everyone, champs. Huh? Including these defaming articles. I'm sorry, but mutual bantering with inappropriate jokes taken out of context should have never led to me getting banned from Twitch in the first place. I mean, how would each of you look if all of your private DMs, your text messages, your chats were looked at, dissected, and taken out of context by someone who's deliberately trying to find something inappropriate in those words? Um, I'd probably be okay. I'd probably be okay. Well, first off, I wouldn't be going anywhere. I wouldn't care if I offended anybody. <laughs> but at the same time, whenever I go into private messages, I always assume that I'm speaking publicly. Because nowadays, people have absolutely no honor when it comes to DMs. I, On my Discord, numerous times, I've had people that come on and they're like, hey, look at this message this dude sent me. And they're just spamming all these DMs. I delete that shit and I tell them, hey, don't do that here. 
You can, you, and they're, oh, but they're my DMs. Yes, they're your DMs, but you're acting dishonorably. The fact that you're going to be like, look at what this guy told me in private. Yeah, it's a private message, dude. Keep it that way. Show a little bit of res like self-respect is the way that I see it. But however, I cannot control anybody that I speak with. But I can control how I speak. So if I'm going to be speaking in DMs, I'm just assuming that it's already in, in the public eye. Because I don't think that there's any actual private messaging going on. Because anybody could just flip out and just be like, copy, paste, copy, paste. Look at the screenshot. Blah, 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 blah. And I, it's, it's, I've seen people try to get me involved on some drama too. Let's say some very popular Warhammer 40k YouTubers, dude. I had people giving me private DMs that they had with these people. And they were showing me what they were saying, what their plans were, everything. And I'm like, dude, don't even... And it was a lot of it was against me. And I'm like, dude, I don't even want to hear it. I was like, I'm not here for the drama. You keep your DMs exactly that way. You, you keep them private. I'm not interested in like this uh, this kind of shit. But anyways, that's a little bit off topic overall. But all I'm saying is that uh, when if you ever become someone that's more public, in the public, assume that everything that you say is also in the public as well, even if you say it in private. And this is not a situation where a victim publicly accuses someone of wrongdoing. That never happened here. Although I also do want to say this, though, it was pretty damn scummy for it, it to be Twitch themselves that started leaking this shit. This, it's not like he was DMing somebody and then the friends started leaking the DMs. This was Twitch themselves. The very platform themselves was leaking that shit. That's crazy. We're talking about allegations that Twitch made against me as a half-baked reason for justifying their actions of suspending and shutting down my channel. Allegations that Twitch made without even a legal analysis of whether the whisper messages were legal. You see, I engage with my community. I engage with other streamers. And through Twitch whispers, I communicate with Twitch users. Conversations that consisted of a variety of playing games and gaming politics, content creation, random stuff. This was the extent of my whispers with this Twitch user. On June 21st, 2020, my ex-Twitch partner manager learns that I exchanged whispers with the Twitch user. <laughs> and I say ex-partner manager because for years, this guy didn't do anything for me, my community, or my channel. For years. I'm talking no front page love. You're talking about the face of the platform, right? Literally. The face of the platform. We heart... And I know Champions Club remembers this. We got, we got zero front page love on the website. Uh, he, I didn't know that. He was never on my channel. He didn't follow me on Twitter. He, he wouldn't even inform us about Twitch rival he tournaments. We're talking about Twitter. the two-time. Twitch rival tournament. Oh, I'm sorry. I, God, I, would you, would you want to play in it? <laughs> I don't know why, but that, that's like so goofy. Like, he didn't even follow me on Twitter. Like, Damn. Hey, but if you, okay, if you had a manager and you're signing these contracts, which you should, because I mean, you're pulling in millions of dollars. So the people that are supposed to be your managers and they're supposed to be helping you in a way they, they should have a, um, an obligation towards you almost like trust law, trust law would have like a fiduciary obligation. In other words, they, they're legally obligated to do things in within your benefit. You should have had something similar to that. And so they should be obligated to, to do things in your best interest. And if you had this dude going behind your back doing anything, you should be able to sue him as well. We got zero support from this guy. And it was just so obvious that he carried a grudge against the two time. Strange. So after we signed with just Twitch in 2019, chat. we asked for a new partner manager. And just a few months later, that ex Twitch partner manager is directly involved with getting me banned. <laughs> Coincidence? The Twitch user tells the ex Twitch partner manager that they do not want to report anything to Twitch. I'll repeat that sentence one more time just in case anybody missed that one. The Twitch user tells this ex Twitch partner manager that they do not want to report anything to Twitch. But this ex Twitch partner manager encourages the user and even directs them to file a report directly with Twitch, even though the user told him clearly that we never physically met anywhere and that no photographs were exchanged. 
On June 24th, 2020, Twitch's special operations team receives and reviews the user's report. So then the user did send in the report. Okay, that's interesting. They find no issues and determine that it did not warrant any further escalation to Twitch's law enforcement response team. <clears throat> that would have been the end. <laughs> that should have been the end. But that partner manager, oh boy, oh boy, did he had it out. He had, he had it out for the two time. He finds out that no further action will be taken. So what does he do? He personally escalates the report to a friend on the Twitch's LER team. The LER team, remember, that's the Twitch's law. You know what this kind of reminds me of a little bit? This is just my personal opinion. It kind of reminds me of people like, uh, what's that one YouTuber? His name is like the Act Man. I think that's what he's called. But he was the one that came out and he was roasting Dr. Disrespect. But it's kind of like, okay, if this was investigated by even Twitch, as he was saying, and then they said that there's no reason to escalate it anymore, that it's okay. And then law enforcement eventually takes a look at it and also says essentially the same thing, like there's nothing here. Yet people still want to put a rope around your neck and hang you out, if you know what I'm saying, hang you out to dry. The goal is like my self-righteousness must be, it must come to bear, so to speak. Like I, my moral high ground is what matters. What law enforcement, what all these other people say doesn't mean anything. It's what I personally want to happen. My only, my personal vindictive demeanor, so to speak. And so it's like they, they start putting people out to dry no matter what. And it's like they just want to roast them. I find that interesting. Enforcement response team. He escalates the report to a friend on Twitch's LER team. So a day later, on June 25th, the LER analyst pulls the entirety of the whisper messages and begins discussing them with his director of the LER team. Mind you, this director is on vacation at that time and does not have access to their computer or work files. L let me just remind you, I went through a multi-year, multi -mil a, a, a big time arbitration, okay? And uh, you know, you discover a lot of stuff. Mind you, this director is on vacation at that time. The LER analyst cherry picks and sends a few targeted excerpts out of context from the whisper messages to this director. Now, if you do this, you can make anyone's messages look inappropriate, even when they aren't. Within less than one hour, this LER analyst and his director have made the decision to suspend me from Twitch. Twitch submits a report to NCMEC. You guys all read those little articles, huh? The NCMEC. Twitch submits that report. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Guess what? As far as I know, and over four years have passed, they didn't do anything with the report. As far as I know, they didn't escalate Twitch's report to law enforcement. <laughs> oh, Mind you... The same people that made this decision admit internally that the messages did not constitute sexting. The same people that made this decision at Twitch admit internally that the messages did not warrant any child sexual abuse material charge. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me while admitted they did not perform any legal analysis of whether the messages exchanged were illegal in any way. <laughs> Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me while admitting that they never investigated the age of consent in the jurisdiction where the user's messages were sent and received. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me without ever interviewing me, the user, or any other third party, including the partner manager. It's fucking unbelievable! And my guess is that's why they settled out of court. I'm not gonna get into every detail regarding my legal case. <clears throat> But these former Twitch employees that claim to have first-hand knowledge, they just don't have a clue. They didn't report any facts. The judge in the case determined that the whispers were not illegal. <laughs> so then why did Twitch use these messages against me? I, I so you had the child services, you had the court, and you, and you had initially Twitch saying, like, there's just nothing here. That's quite a bit. 
And that's why I say that the, the people out there that would just had like this weird moral high ground on them. They wanted to look down on him and just, you know, hang him out to dry, so to speak. It's like we don't have all the information yet. And what we do know is that he's not in jail. So what do you what exactly are you accusing him of? You know, it's it's playing politics. And I think they're looking for easy targets. And I think it just becomes silly. A lot of times, and I've used this before, I'm going to be straight up with you. I think a lot of times people who see themselves as losers want to see themselves as a hero. And so they're looking for an easy target, an easy dragon, so to speak, to, to put up on a giant mountain. And then they're going to take themselves and put themselves as like the knight in shining armor with the shield, you know, battling the dragon. So they're looking for this boogeyman that they can slay in order to kind of give themselves perhaps the credentials that they don't feel that they even have. It's just this weird moral superiority kind of thing. That's why I looked at it and I said, he could be guilty. Maybe he does deserve to go to jail. I don't know. But I'm just looking at it going, I, I want to see more information before you actually start speaking more on the subject and saying, you're guilty or anything else like that. Yet so many people threw him underneath the bus from what it seems like so far. And I think it always has to do with those same, pe the same people that always seem to be touchy-feely are the ones that tend to, to really like to chastise people over things like that, if you get my drift. Not accusing anybody directly, I'm just saying. You know, the people that tend to lecture you about consent don't mind uh, ignoring it. Hey, why did Twi Twitch treat the docs so differently from their other streamers? I mean, outside of the obvious. I mean, just take a look at me. <laughs> Unfiltered. The realest motherfucker in this industry. Oof. You know what? I, I am actually happy that he came out with this level of aggression. Because so many people beat around the bush. They don't necessarily come out and just say it as is. But instead, they just want to sit there and be like, well, you guys, you know... I'm just hoping to have a good day. I'm just hoping to blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, dude, you got to hammer that shit. And if he feels that he's uh, in the right, and so far I would be more leaning in saying that, um, well, he was more in the right than in the wrong. Am I saying that he should have been doing this to begin with? Obviously not. But there was nothing there to take action against him legally. He, was, he didn't mention that the person was 18. He just said that they were the age of consent. And that changes from state to state. 